Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the collider. Well, as you started to say, it's a 27 kilometer tunnel, which is between 50 and 100 meters underground. Uh, it's filled with high technology components like superconducting magnets, superconducting radio frequency systems, which are for, uh, for accelerating the beam, and lots of other. Of course, from the engineering point of view, this is what interests me since I'm an engineer. Uh, it has almost every discipline of engineering you could think of, starting with the construction of the tunnel, which is civil engineering, alignment, aligning the tunneling machine so that you go around and actually finish the circle and don't keep going around and around. Okay. Uh, and uh, then, of course, there's all of the uh, high technology stuff, the supercon superconductivity, the cryogenic system, which cools the magnets, the power supplies, which put the current into the magnet, which transform the uh, alternating current from the grid to DC current for the magnets, the beam instrumentation for measuring the properties of the beam on the way around, the control system, the feedback systems for maintaining the properties good, and so on and so on and so on. I gave a list this morning in the talk. I, I don't think there's any discipline in engineering which we don't cover, even, even down to chemical engineering for the vacuum system. Okay, so you have this tunnel under the ground where, you have, where you're getting these proton beams to travel at extremely high energies, high speeds around to collide at a point. Can you tell me about the, the, the scale of energy that's involved here? The scale of energy, well, th there are two things which concern us when we're operating the machine from the safety of the equipment point of view. Um, the first thing is the stored energy in the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. uh, the magnetic field has something like 13,000 amperes flowing through it over the 27 kilometers. The stored energy of the whole ring from the magnetic point of view is something like 11, 10 gigajoules, 10 or 11 gigajoules. And 10 or 11 gigajoules is the same energy which uh, an aircraft carrier traveling at full battle speed has uh, is that amount of energy, oh 10 okay. gigajoules. Okay. Now, when, when anything goes wrong in the uh, accelerator with the magnet, or we want to get rid of the energy in the magnet, we have about 40 seconds to get rid of this. So we have to stop this battleship in, in 40 stop seconds. And what would happen if, if the battleship didn't stop? Well, it didn't stop once in mm -hmm. September 2008, and um, there was damage quite a substantial damage done to all of the major components over about a length of 400 meters, which caused us to 14 months of shutdown to repair right. just the damage. And this damage was caused by one joint, one interconnection out of 100,000 not being properly soldered. One out of 100,000. So the quality control quality was good, control. but it wasn't good enough. Okay, okay, my goodness. Um, but obviously everything, everything went well. Um, and on July 4th, we had this announcement of the discovery of a boson consistent with yes. this long sought after Higgs particle. You were there. Can you tell me a little bit about the day? Well, um, it was a very, very um, joyous and momentous and emotional occasion for everybody because uh, when you've been working on such a thing for such a long time, uh, it becomes part of your life. Yeah. And, uh, and when you see the results and you see, even though we are engineers, we built it uh, we saw the results which came from the experiments and they, the experiments built these enormous detectors which are very complicated as well. The whole thing together with thousands and thousands of people all to you know, find one missing uh, piece of the puzzle in, in the fundamental uh, laws of nature. I think it's, a, it's a incredible, it was an cr incredible experience. The auditorium in CERN wasn't, just wasn't big enough. Um, yeah. It holds about 450 people. Uh, but they were queuing up, they were actually camping out the night before, they camped out as if it was a rock concert the night before, and uh, the poor CERN staff couldn't get a seat because this is all the students, all, all the students camped out <laughs> okay. and took all the seats. And uh, So when I came, I came about quarter past seven in the morning, um, and of course there were some reserved seats for some people like Peter Higgs and, and so on and so forth, and um, when I came about quarter past seven, they were queued up in for about half a mile all the way back down the stairs out to the car park. They're, they're queuing up waiting to get in at half past seven. And then when they got in, there was twice as many people still waiting outside when all the seats were taken. But we had other uh, auditoriums where we, we, we did a webcast mm -hmm. to them so they could see it, but they wanted to be at the live one. So